Scusa un po' là. Now I start my presentation. Uh, my, uh, this research uh, is done by uh, three people, including me. Uh, me, Seiji Kumaga, and uh, uh, Dr. Gawa Tupten, and uh, Dr. Akinori Yasuda. But uh, the two uh, other people uh, cannot come here. So uh, today, uh, I represent uh, instead of them. So uh, now I start. And the background of research. Uh, Bhutan is very famous uh, for the concept of GNH, as you know, gross national happiness which attract uh, attention from all over the world. And, uh, and the last, the top picture is uh, His Majesty Fifth King and uh, Queen Jetsun Pema. Uh, they came to Japan and they visited Fukushima. Uh, as you know, there are very big uh, earthquake and tsunami and there are so many victims and they are praying uh, for the victims. And uh, from uh, this, uh, from their I can say, uh, attitude, uh, modest attitude. Japanese people are really touched and uh, moved. Uh, now, Japanese people are really interested in Bhutan, and uh, uh, we want to know uh, what the Bhutan and what the Bhutanese culture is. Uh, however, in order to understand the concept of GNH and Bhutan, Bhutan's culture, precisely and deeply, it is necessary to understand what the Bhutanese Buddhism is. Uh, because Bhutan's Buddhism, Buddhism is the basis of Bhutan's culture. And uh, uh, in order, uh, under such a background, uh, I established the Bhutan's Buddhism Research Project in collaboration with Sir Dosho Karmaura uh, in order to study Bhutan's Buddhism in full scale. And uh, this is uh, the picture of the uh, International Symposium of uh, BBRP, Bhutanese Buddhism Research Project, organized uh, this January at Kyoto University. And uh, we had a, a international symposium. And uh, at that time, uh, we had a, a press conference uh, in front of the Japanese media. And now Japanese media are also very interested in our project. And uh, oh, the organization chart. So uh, we have two groups, Japanese research group and Bhutanese research group. And we exchange information and we uh, study cooperatively. And uh, we have uh, many collaborative researchers of each field. So mainly we are studying uh, Bhutanese Buddhism, but uh, with uh, the many researchers of uh, other fields, uh, we are doing interdisciplinary research on uh, I can say, uh, applied uh, buddhoji, not only for uh, philology, philosophy, uh, anthropology, but also, for example, politics, economics, and uh, environment, uh, many, many topics we have. And uh, uh, about the result, uh, we, uh, I can say, uh, uh, we transmit, uh, we give the information and the suggestion, not only to the academic community, but also the general public and also the political and the business community. And the person in charge, uh, Bhutanese side, is uh, Sadashu Karimura. And uh, on Japanese side, unfortunately, is such a young scholar. And so I asked uh, Professor Yoshiro Imaeda of CNRS uh, to become a consultant of our project. And uh, uh, in the project, we have three pillars past, present, and the future. And the past uh, is history and the philosophy of a Bhutanese Buddhism. And today's topic is included uh, in the first, uh, first topic, a uh, first point. And the second, the present state of Bhutanese Buddhism. And the third point is future. But it's not uh, the future of Buddhism, but the uh, happiness of future society. So uh, we are uh, executing interdisciplinary uh, buddhistical research for happiness of future society. So I believe the BBRP project will contribute Bhutan, Japan, France, and all over the world, not only for the Buddhists, but also the society. And, uh, <laughs> and now uh, it's a start uh, of my presentation. And uh, now I'd like to explain the condition of the research 
on past Buddhist, Buddhism. And Western scholars such as Michael Aris and Yoshiro Imaeda have already studied, uh, st uh, studied academically the history of Bhutanese Buddhism. However, uh, there is no full-scale research on Bhutanese Buddhism philosophy in academic field. So uh, now it's uh, easy to grasp the history of Bhutanese Buddhism, but uh, it's still difficult to grasp the Bhutanese Buddhist philosophy. So we need to start to study Bhutanese Buddhism and uh, Buddhist philosophy. And uh, uh, as you know, Bhutan is called Dukyu, uh, that is to say, the country of the national school, Dukpa Kagyu. Uh, so we need to understand Dukpa Kagyu philosophy in order to precisely and deeply understand Bhutan's culture and their thought. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, Dukpa Kage philosophy, uh, at the beginning of the study of uh, Dukpa Kage philosophy, uh, we must study its founder, Tsampa Gyare. So uh, today I'd like to introduce the general outline of the collected works of Tsampa Gyare. And now I uh, explain the Tsampa Gare and the Dukpa Kage school. Maybe you know very much, so I don't need to, to uh, explain very uh, uh, deeply. And the Dukpa Kagyu is, uh, as you know, the sub-school uh, of the Pakamodupa Kagyu, uh, which is the sub-school of Kagyu school. So uh, Dukpa Kagyu is uh, the sub-sub-school of Kagyu school. And uh, as you know, uh, this is the national school of Kingdom of Bhutan. So we call uh, Dukpa Yu, Dukyu. And the founder is uh, Tsampagare Yeshe Doje. His teacher is uh, Lindepa, uh, Lindepa Pema Doje. Uh, and uh, uh, the Duke, uh, sorry, uh, the Tsampagare uh, succeeded. After uh, his teacher Lindepa's death, he, uh, he uh, succeeded uh, the Rarum Monastery and, uh, and the disciples of uh, Lindepa. And by himself, he established uh, Londri Monastery and also Duke Monastery. Then after Tsampagere's death, uh, Dharma Senge uh, succeeded the two principal monasteries, and that is to say, Rarum Monastery and uh, uh, Duke uh, Monastery, situated uh, in the south of Tibet. And uh, in the period of Dharma Senge, uh, Pajo Dugon Shikpo oh, was sent to Bhutan. It's the, uh, it was the first mission to uh, Bhutan for the Dukpa Kagyu school. And he established, Pajo Dugon Shikpo established some monasteries, including Tango Monastery, a very famous monastery, uh, as a, uh, a Buddhist university, the highest Buddhist uh, Dukpa University in Timpu. <coughs> and his ancestors uh, became a supporter of Dukpa Kagyu school in Bhutan. Uh, he met uh, children uh, in Bhutan. So uh, by the time of uh, uh, Shaptun Gawan Namgyal's arrival, uh, there were uh, already supporters uh, of Dukpa Kagyu uh, in Bhutan. And uh, uh, that's why uh, the Duk Dukpa, Dukpa Kagyu school uh, became uh, the, how can you say, uh, uh, the Dukpa Kagyu uh, got a very strong influence in Bhutan. Uh, when the Shepardunga Wandamgyal came to Bhutan. Uh, so we need, uh, as I said, uh, in order to uh, study the Dukpa Kagyu school, we need uh, to study uh, first the Tsampagere, I think. And uh, now I'd like to uh, explain the condition of the research of Tsampagere. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Sampagere uh, is very respected uh, as a found founder uh, of Dukpa Kagyu school, of course, but uh, about him, uh, there was no uh, exhaustive research on all of his works because uh, many of his texts were not accessible easily. Uh, that's why it has been difficult to grasp his doctrine as a whole. However, uh, by grace of uh, the publication of three kinds of collected works of Sampagere, it became much easier to access his works. And now uh, I'd like to explain the three collected works of Tsampagere. 
uh, first in the Leather Key Collection. Uh, it was published in 1972, uh, but uh, it includes only six works. So it was a little bit difficult to, I can say, uh, judge his personality from uh, six works. It's too small. And then uh, Nepali's collection uh, was published in 1998, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, it uh, includes uh, 22 works, so uh, three times more uh, works. Uh, so uh, it's uh, much easier uh, to I can say, uh, access uh, his uh, whole works, and uh, it's easier to imagine his uh, personality. And uh, uh, Bhutan's collection uh, was published last year uh, by the monastic body. It includes uh, 39 works, so it's much more than the previous uh, collections. So uh, now, uh, just now, it's very e uh, good timing to research Tsampagari's works. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, the Ladakh collection uh, was published uh, 40 years ago, uh, and uh, this and this collection includes only six works, and uh, each uh, manuscript manuscripts and uh, uh, block prints were collected from uh, various lamas and the notables of Ladakh, and these uh, these subjects uh, are mainly concerning practice, history, and biography. Uh, about the uh, detail of the each text. There are so many texts, so uh, in the paper I will uh, explain in details. And uh, uh, in the Nepal's, uh, Nepalese collection, uh, published in uh, 1998, it includes uh, 20, 22 works. Uh, but the first work is uh, only the culture, the table of contents of this collection. So we uh, exclude uh, it uh, as a, a treatise. So uh, totally, uh, there are uh, 22 works. And many works uh, are concerning meditation, practice, and Mahamudra. Uh, so we can easily uh, understand uh, he's a, uh, the expert of uh, uh, a tantric practitioner. And now uh, I'd like to explain the Buddhist collection. The Buddhist collection uh, brought the following three benefits. First, Tsampagari's works, scattered in different places in Bhutan, were collected in, uh, into one publication. So before, uh, there are many, uh, there are still, uh, there are also already uh, many uh, works in Bhutan, but they were uh, placed in uh, different places. So uh, it, it was a little bit difficult to I can say, uh, refer uh, at the same time. But uh, by grace of this uh, correction, uh, we can uh, refer uh, this uh, old correction at once. And second, by grace of the uh, Wuchen edition made from Ume manuscripts, uh, we can read uh, his text more easily. Uh, before uh, the, uh, the manuscripts uh, in Ume script, so it was a little bit difficult uh, to read. But now uh, we can read uh, his text in Uchin script, so it's much easier and quicker to read. And the biggest benefit is that the collection provides the works which are not included in the, both the Ladaki collection and the Nepalese collection. So we can see, uh, we can access uh, much more his works. It's the biggest benefit, I think. But uh, at the same time, there are some problems, of course, and there are uh, there occurred uh, some mistrans mistranscriptions uh, in the process of editing the manuscript. Manuscripts, of course, uh, there are so many works. Uh, so in the process of uh, editing, uh, there occurred uh, mistranscription. Of course, so uh, we need uh, to modify the, such a mistranscription. And uh, it is not an uh, academic critical edition. So uh, even if uh, there are some uh, misspelling in, in the, in the manuscript, manuscripts, they don't uh, modify. Uh, and uh, it doesn't identify the source of each quotation. There are many quotations, 
but uh, they don't, uh, I can say, uh, identify the source in, in which, I can say, who made uh, this, uh, who, I can say, uh, whose uh, process uh, or uh, which text uh, like that, they don't uh, identify. Uh, because uh, they don't need to uh, identify the source uh, in the monastic uh, education and the monastic uh, study. Uh, but uh, in the academic uh, field, always we have to attest the source. So uh, uh, we need to uh, use it carefully uh, in the case of academic use. And so, uh, in our project, uh, we plan to uh, collect all available manuscripts and editions and make a critical edition uh, which also identifies uh, the source of quotations. And now I show the uh, old works uh, in the Buddhist collection. This is the uh, Buddhist collection I published last year. Okay, I skip. So uh, today I showed you uh, three corrections: Buddhist uh, correction, and the Ladakhi correction, and the Nepalese correction. The Ladakhi correction is the oldest one, and the Nepalese correction is the second, second oldest one, and the Buddhist correction is the US one. So uh, as you can see in the uh, red number, uh, these these numbers are not included in uh, both uh, Ladakh edition and uh, Nepalese edition. So uh, we can understand uh, Buddhist collection provides more works. And uh, as I explained, uh, Buddhist collection uh, includes all six works in the Ladakh collection and uh, it covers uh, also 22 works, all 22 works of the Nepalese collection. This, uh, the number, the number of accessible works of something like the Mercury uh, increased by the of the publication of uh, the Buddhist collection. So this is the development uh, of the commission <coughs> study of some uh, of Tukwa Kagyu school, especially on Sampagiri. And now I'd like to uh, explain very shortly uh, the category of Sampagiri's work. So uh, we can categor categorize uh, his works into nine. And uh, among all of the uh, 39 works, there are uh, 11 works on meditation, three works on Mahamudra, four works on practice, and three works on ritual. So more than, more than half, work, uh, half of works are uh, concerning temperate practice, so uh, this fact seems to confirm his characteristics as a tantric practitioner. On the other hand, he seems to achieve a mastery of philosophy because he uh, wrote uh, several texts on philosophy, uh, toxographical treatise and philosophical texts concerning cyclic, cyclic uh, existen uh, existence and the liberation, samsara and the nirvana, and so on. And he seems to be committed uh, to educate his disciple. He's, uh, he seems to be a very good teacher because he composed several works on instruction. And uh, we can also judge that uh, he had a literal, uh, literary talent and a sophisticated knowledge of general uh, culture uh, because he wrote also uh, literary spiritual songs and the practical <coughs> works such as how to uh, write a letters, how to make a letters like that. So uh, uh, he was, of course, uh, a very good tantric practitioner, but uh, he's also an uh, expert of philosophy and a very good teacher, and also he, uh, he was familiar with many uh, cultural things. So uh, now I conclusion, and uh, now I conclude uh, my presentation. About the edition, the U.S. Buddhist collection uh, includes the both uh, all this Ladakhi collection and the Nepalese collection. So uh, now it's time to uh, research the Tantagari uh, research. However, as I uh, explained, uh, there still exist some problems, 
such as mistranscriptions and also uh, no identified quotation uh, even in the US Buddhist correction. So uh, we must uh, compose a new uh, critical edition and we are now uh, editing. So it will be published in two or three years, I think. And uh, uh, as I explained, uh, he's the expert of the tantric practice, but uh, he's uh, at the same time, uh, he's good at uh, philosophy and also uh, education, and also uh, he's uh, familiar with the uh, general things, general practical uh, information he's very uh, good at. So uh, in this paper, we analyze his general characteristics from the point of view of his collected works. Uh, hereafter, we need to analyze each work uh, in the collection in details in order to grasp his detailed characteristics. And we are now creating uh, English translation of all works of San uh, but it uh, takes a lot of time. So first, we plan to publish the summary of his uh, each work very soon. Uh, thus, we will uh, continue the study of Tsampagri uh, as one part of the Buddhist Buddhism research project. And uh, at last, I'd like to uh, thank uh, many people, uh, His uh, Holiness J. Kenpo, Doji Ofon, and the Secretary General Genpo Doji, uh, who supported uh, my research. And uh, uh, especially, I really thank to Dasho Karimaura, uh, without his uh, support, uh, we could not uh, do our project. And also, Mr. David Chuka, uh, he uh, supported me always, and the other CDS uh, staff, and also uh, Kyoto University professors, and uh, of course, Professor Imaida, and many learners, professors, and colleagues. And now I uh, finish my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>